All right. Good evening. 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 Bechlal, and, and, and specifically the Indian of Purim uh, sort of like enables us to understand the Nikuda of the relationship between the Sechab Kinas Kedem and the Sechab Kinas Ochar. We're Torah Hafalaf, of course, Likut and Laran. We have learned Siman Dalid, that where we have spoken about, um, of course, Shiva Saneras. And then we spoke about the Sukkah, which is Shiva Sanina Anana Kovid. And then Abino went. And started explaining the sukkah is the pino of the makifin. And the sukkah in and of itself is the in of the makifin. And the sukkah represents, sukkah represents uh, another understanding in this Indian of uh, the Sechel of Pchinas Ocha and the Sechel of Pchinas Kerem. You know that um, we said that the Be'er, the well, came with the schools of Miriam, right? The man came with the schools of Moshe. And then that covered came in the schools of Arnakar. The a very interesting thing to understand, a very important thing to understand in this issue of the Secha Primus Kedem, another cover of the Sukkah, is there is only one Yontan. They present these three extraordinary um, phenomena that took place in the Midbar. We don't have any yontav to represent the man. We don't have any yontav to represent the well, the air. But we do have a yontav that represents a non And it's something that it needs to be understood. You know, why Dafka Sukkot? The reason is that when Am Yisrael was in the Midbar, when they came out of the tribe, they were attacked by Amalek. Amalek represents the opposite of Amuna. Amuna, Amalek represents the suffering, the doubt. The thing is that we have two situations, two states. One of them is the Indian of Sechab Khinas Kedem which represents Ainsof, represents infinity, represents a Seichel that has no end and no beginning. It was always here. And then we have the Seichel of Pchinas Ochar. And the Seichel of Pchinas Ochar is the thing that enables us 
as people that have free choice to connect to the Sechel Chinas Kedem. The Rabbeinu says, before in Simon Dalton, it says that the, there are two madrigas of light. There is the level of Makiv, which is the representation of Kedem. And there is the Pnimi, which is the Ocher. That's the thing that you know about. You can figure it out. You work with it and so forth. And Rabbeinu says that the Makif gives the Chiyas, gives the life force to the Pnimi, to the the. the the aura pnimi, the light that you have inside your faculties. But this is only true, this is only true when the seicho of chinas which represents the human uh, mental mode, uh, mode of intelligence, mode of figuring things out, is aimed directly towards the Makib. The Makib does not exist in the Pnimi yet. It's outside. It can feed the Pnimi, the inner light. If the inner light, if the inner light is aimed directly with kisufin, with longing to get the oramakif, if a person is just using his human seho, is even interested in the oramakif, he doesn't get feels from the oramakif. The oramakif represents the keli that enables us to encompass infinite content. And that's a muna. And a muna is signaled, is signaled with a circle. A muna encircles you. The human intellect being that is Pchinas Ochar, which means that every single realization rests on previous knowledge or previous realization or previous consequences or previous, you know, opinions. It's represented with a line because it's linear. One thing follows another. So, you have Secha Pchinas Ocha is Yosha, and Secha Pchinas Kedem is an ego. Munoschos Yosecha. Now, it is very important to understand that it is the level of a Muna, the circle, that creates the malbushing, the clothing around the person. Without the malbushing, without the covering, a Jew would be totally susceptible to the attack of a Amalek, a Amalek, Gematria, Suffolk, doubt. Well, how do you know? A, you don't really know. B, you'll never make it anyhow. Whatever it is, whatever Tirutsim he has, whatever attack, frontal attacks that Amalek attacks people, Amalek wants to come in and chop the line between the straight line, which is Chinas Aha, which is what you have to bring to the table as a person, and the Kedem which is another covenant. All this is represented 
in the figure of Arnakun. The anonym which covered the Jews and protected them came in the schos of Arnakun. Moshe Rabbeinu, as far as we are concerned, Moshe Rabbeinu is Pchinas Das. He is the Ora Makif. He's Pnei Amenoira. Moshe Rabbeinu represents a movement of the light as it comes from above, coming in, coming down. But the, the, the Arna Kohen represents the Koyach do from coming from bottom up. That's why the Pasuk says, Arna Kohen, you're the one who's supposed to do the job of what? Of elevating the Pnei Aminora when you are doing the work from, you know, from, from below and you lift it up. That is the Avoid of Arnakon. That brings about the, the revelation of Anona Kovit. Anona Kovit protected the Jew. A Moloch had no way to attack those who were inside. The Anona Kovit. Because they were protected with the light of the Amuna. It's a light that comes comes down from the Amuna. It's called it's called the Ora Chashmal, the light of the Chashmal. Chashmal is that is the the um deflector shields those of the old Star Trek. You know, that's the thing that keeps away the Amalek. So who did the Amalek, who did the Amalek get? Who did he attack? He attacked those that the Ha'onon Paltam, that the, the cloud let them out. In other words, they lost their Amunah. Oh, the Amalek is, is extremely quick to jump in to find any kind of a loophole, any kind of direction to go in. I'm a soldier just came out of the tribe. 210 years altogether 400 years, but 210 years of, of, of extremely hard labor. They were, they were exhausted, they were bushed. They came out of Yamsuf, yes, after tremendous fear of Mitzrayim chasing after them. And they come out of the desert. On comes a Molek. He always attacks. He finds the weak points. He finds, you know, those points where he can attack. That's these are the points that he wants to to to. That's what he does. Now the thing is that you have to understand that. The man and, 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 the, and the water from the Be'er, everybody got. Am Yisrael got them, and the Arab Rav got them too, because they had to eat. They had to eat, they had to drink. I mean, uh, what they tested in the, mullet, in, in the man, every, you know, that's what the Zaya says, that the, the, the Am, the, the people, uh, you know, Shatua Am, they went, they went, Shatua Am means basically they went foraging. But Zaya says, Shatu is from the, the, the root of Shtusa, of nonsense. When they ate the man, they wanted to taste, you know, they wanted to taste um, filet mignon. They wanted to taste, you know, they wanted to taste uh, caviar. They wanted to taste, you know, like, you know, let me show you how you do, you know, handmade chocolate, you know, with, uh, 
with pearl in his iron or whatever. They, they, they took it down to Gashmias, said about that to eat. The one thing they didn't have, they didn't have an honor covenant. They were not covered within that honor covenant. When Aaron Akoyan passed away, it says, Vayiru Bnei Yisrael Kimes Aaron. I'm sorry, saw that Aaron passed away. So then they, he says, what is this Vayiru? That they saw, they didn't see what. Rosh Abeno, they didn't see that they saw that he passed away, whatever. Then Aaron Akoyan said, he saw the passed away, or she says, they saw his bed flow, you know, they saw the, they, 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 they would not believe, they could not believe that the person who personally stopped the angel of death, you know, with the, the machta, with the, with the k'teris, that the angel would, 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 uh, would um, have a shlita over him. Until that, that is shown, that is shown, uh, that is shown, uh, but Chazal says it's not that the Bnei Yisrael the Yiru that they saw. He says Vayiro means that they they became they 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 were flooded with dread because as long as Aaron Cohen was there, they were anon covered. They were as long as they were anon covered, there was protection. Were protected. Are protected from, 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 from Amalek. And then it says, Vayar Melech Nan Yishev Orod. This was really Amalek. And he saw, he saw what did he see? He said, Am Yisrael was stripped of an honor covered. And he went to war with them. And the way that Amalek always does. He came with a subterfuge. They were wearing, they were really Amalekim, and they spoke the, the language of Canaan. And I think they were the clothes of Arad. And the whole thing they did so that Am Yisrael will not daven. And it says, Rabbi Shalom send us, save us from these people. So Am Yisrael will not know who these people really are. And they won't daven for they need to daven. And they won't succeed. And this is what happened. They took from Am Yisrael the Vayish B'Menu Shevi. So they took one girl, one shifcha. But that was enough. What do you mean it was enough? Not just that, you know, that besides just that. But the, the Makuda that if Amalek was able to take one girl, it means that the, the, the protective shield was off. And they were exposed. That's why Amisrael made they made a nader. He says, I'm going to just finish them off and wherever it is I find them, give to you. We don't, we're not going to touch, we don't do anything for us. Nothing for ourselves. No plunder, no rich, nothing, nothing, everything to you. Why did he use the law of Amazze? Why did he say Aknani? Because they didn't know who they were. And usually when you dive, and that's one of the things that it's important to speak about, when you pray for anything, you have to delineate it out. You have to be very precise. When Yaakov Avinu Daven, he says, Hatzileini miyad ochim yad Well, how many brothers did he have? I know, nevertheless, he's supposed to say specifically, I'm scared, what? That he will come and beat me. Mothers over children. Bonim is a muna. 
M, M is the Malchus. The only one M, the, the, the women in the Midbar did not, did not uh, worship the ego. They don't worship the ego. They had, they had earrings in their ears. There's in the ears, you know, that are, are in the, uh, I don't think they were in the ear lob, they were actually here. I think in today's piercing, they do it also. They don't know why, why Dafka here. So you should know you can never ever deceive a woman. I was sure I came to, 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 you know, from Aaron, I was says, you know, go ahead, take, take the earrings from your wives and bring them to me. We'll throw them to the, into the fire. Why did he do that? Because he knew the women. They, 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 they know no, no nonsense. The earrings for what? For the eagle? Yeah, vec. Ain't getting nothing. The men took their jewelry, and this is what how they built the eagle. The women did not. They gave the earrings, they gave the jewelry for the Mishkan, yes, but not for the ego. Yaakov says, Penyavov, Yikani, M Albonim, that certainty. Certitude of the women, this is what Penyavov, Yikani. M Albonim, the certitude and the Bonim, the Muna. And here we start, we're coming to this month of Odor, today. The month of Odor represents the last, that's it. It's the last month of the year. It represents the Sechel Pchinas Ochor. The last can only be when you're dealing with something that has a beginning and an end. So there's the first and there's the last. This is Shaykh only Sechel Pchinas Ochor, but Sechel Pchinas Kedem, there is no beginning, there's no end. There is, in a circle, there's no beginning, there's no end. There's no first, there's no last. The main, the main Milchama of a Malik, you know, that is. Of, of Haman is on this particular Nakuda. That's a very naked thing, you know. Every Pesach, which Rabino says that Purim is the beginning for Pesach, we say, um, why did Yakodesh Baruch Hu take us out of Mitzrayim? Because, you know, we were like, yay, close. We already went down to 49th gate of Tuma. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu would have taken us out, we would have stayed in Mitzrayim and finished. There would be no way to get out. We'd get into heresy, into Apicorsis, get married with the, 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 the Goyim over there. And that's it. Later on in 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 in, in Purim, they already had the Torah. Even though over there they actually did marry Goethes. They did go in there, but they already had Mordechai. They already had the Torah. The question is how long would it have taken it? It says that Am Yisrael took their matzahs, you know, took their, their dough, you know, and they didn't let it leaven. It, it, it did not have the opportunity to leaven before they had to go because they had to go quickly. If they would have waited a little bit longer, they would have fallen the 49th gate and that's it, they will never come out. How much is, how long does it take a matzah, a dough, to become chametz? The sheet that, that we that we hold today is 18 minutes, you know, for sure, you know. But there's a more makel sheet that says 24 minutes. 
which means if Am Yisrael would have stayed in Mitzrayim for 24 more minutes, they would have never been able to come out of Mitzrayim. Very ridiculous thing. 24 minutes, that's it, on the clock, start counting. 24 minutes, that's it, they have to go out. Otherwise, what's the big deal? You know, let the, 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 the door rise and, and uh, the chomets, not chomets, whatever it is. No, no, there's no time to let the chomets, you cannot become chomets. You cannot wait for 24 minutes. So other Chodesh other represents that last, the runway. The end of the Sechel Pchinas Ochar. And we got this stunning gift of Purim. Because Haman built a tree that was 50 amas long. 50 amas tall. What's the idea of 50 amas stone? What's the, what, what do you need that? What, you wanted to make it famous throughout Shushan here? Is it going to be hanging Mordechai? Make it 40 amas. Make it 75 amas. Why 50? No, but he knew the thing is that that, that Moshe Rabbeinu was the only one that actually got, while he was alive, the 49th gate of Kedusha, of Bino, and 49 of the 50th portions of the 50th gate. In other words, but Chasreo Me'at Melokim. The fifth, you know, each one of the gates of Bina is divided to 50. He, had, he knew all of them, all the 49 plus 49 out of the 50 of the 50th. But Chazam Mat Melokim. Because otherwise he couldn't, couldn't have stayed alive. So in order for us to be Nitzel from Haman, there has to be a revelation, be a connection. It was an unbelievable decree. There had to be an amazing connection between the Kava Yosher of the Sechab Chinas Ochar and the Sechab Chinas Ponim. We had to get to the Sechab Chinas Ponim in order to get the Geula of, of Pur. That's the reason why it's a mitzvah to get drunk on Purim. Because specifically at that time, and obviously in our time, the people did not have the faculties, the kalim. They did not, they, they enjoyed the Suda of Oysa Rosha. They married Goethes. They didn't have the kalim, the, the Ktusha Shiva Saneris, in order to connect with the Ora Makif. So the only way to do it through the Kedusha of Mordechai, Mordechai represents the Atiko, Atika Tomer Tomi Vesosin, that's the very beginning of the Torah, that level of the Kesser of Atiko, which is totally hidden, it's already, it's, it's here, it's prevalent, but it is completely hidden. Through the Kerch of Mordechai Tzadik, when they came, they came to connect to the Atiko, to, to the, that, 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 unachievable makif, and the only way they could do it, they could not do it with das. You could not do it while they're using the sechah p'chinas achar. You could not be a human being and get this das. So the only way to do it is by drinking until ad yoda, until you don't know anymore. All this is represented in that connection between the sechah p'chinas achar, p'chinas kedem, is represented in the union of sukkah that we learned. Sukkah contains the, the, the letters chafvav and the letters samachai. These are the two names of Kaddish Baruch Hu. Chafvav, 26, Shemavaya Baruch Hu. Samachai, that's the Shem Adni, that's the name that we use. That's the Malchus. 
So the Samech Vav represents, I'm sorry, so the, the Chav Vav represents Shem Avaya Baruch Hu. That's the Makif. The Pchines Admi, that represents, the Mach represents the Sechel Pchines Yosho. This is what we can do in this world. That's Pchines Ochor. The Sukkah combines them together. Chav Vav and Samechei. Sukkah is an amazing, amazing thing. It is always said that that, that all the other mitzvahs, all the other mitzvahs, you have to use your mind, you have to use this, you have to be careful, whatever it is. And, and the Iker mitzvah is on Yom Tov, you're supposed to eat, on Shabbos, you're supposed to eat. The main thing in Sukkah, this is that they say that that's the, uh, the, the, it's the only mitzvah, it's the only mitzvah, besides Purim, Purim also has this aspect, that your yoytze the mitzvah, your mekayim the mitzvah of sukkah by sleeping. There's no other mitzvah that you are mekayim by sleeping. As a Purim says, if you don't, you know, if you, if you drink, if you can't drink, so you drink a little bit and then you go to sleep, so add the you're mekayim add the In sukkah, that's like, sleeping is like the lowest shimush, the lowest usage. It says, you know, say can to do, tagu can to do. That's like, like it should be your apartment. You should eat there, should sleep there. Everything should be there. I mean, so because eating, when you're eating, okay, there's kedusha, tremendous kedusha. You should daven, you should learn about it. Sleep. What are you doing? Yeah, because sukkah is the connection of the ocher and kedem b'shlemus, and you have them both together. Be'inen of Sukkah. The idea, the idea is when we are coming, when we are coming with, you know, towards this Indian of Sukkah, to this Indian of Purim Mevada, you know, we need to understand that as Rabbeinu says, the Indian of, of, of Schach, which is the main alochus of the Sukkah, is the Ed Yalem in Aretz, Dovo She'en HaMekabel Tumah, something that does not receive Tumah. The Bible says this is Kodesh, this is Chach Mepchinas Kodesh. You have to understand, you cannot make Schach out of something which is Tohar. Something which is pure. Why? Because the very definition of pure is relevant in in a state where tuma is possible, when defilement is is an option. When you're saying this is pure, what are you saying? Also, you said this is not defiled, but it's possible. Rabbeinu says in another term. He says that 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 the term of pure, of of tohar, is the very beginning of the slippery slope towards tumah. That's the only thing that's possible. Because yeah, tohar is is right adjacent to one. Because in one, when everything is one, everything is Pchinas Kedem, it's not Shaykh to say Tohar even. It's not even Shaykh to say that it's pure. Because there is no other possibility, everything is one, everything is Kodesh. That's why the Schach of the Sukkah, the covering of the Sukkah, has to be made out of something that cannot possibly become Tome. The Tome is not even an option, which means it's not a question whether it's pure or not. Pure is not good enough. Has to be something that cannot become Tome whatsoever. This relationship between 
זה שכל בחינס קדם, זה שכל בחינס אוכל. זה קדם, is one, is קדושה. The Ochar, which per definition is Yosher, is straight. There's a possibility, you know, of hanky-panky, of, of ruining things. That's why the Pasuk says, Elohim also is Adam Yosher, made a man straight, a straight line. Pchinas Ochar. Vehemo, plurality, they, They wanted a lot of different kind of angles. This is when you take the plurality and the slippery slope down towards the tumor. You have to understand, there's no way to get the Sechel Pchinas Kedem Unless you start mipchinas achar, unless you're a human being in this world and you're grappling with all the balaganim in this world, all the the, the shtisim, all the yetsaharas, all the you know afflictions, all whatever it is, there's no way to get to the, the malachim cannot get it. Only human beings can. It all depends on how. you know, directed you are, how, you know, tunnel visioned you are to receive, to connect, to connect to the, 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 the sechel, to, 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 to pnei amenoyer, to, to or upon him. Then you have to to that. It is very often In fact, it's, 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 it's a daily thing that we find various um, obstacles in our way. It's amazing how many surprises can be, you know, how many variations on, on obstacles there can be. From physical problems, money problems, relationship problems, whatever, all, all, all these things, every single day it comes out. What we learn, what we take away from today's session is A, whatever you're going through, that's the way to do it. A Moloch wants to go in and say, you, yeah, you're never going to do it. You're never going to make it. Forget about it. No, it's not, uh, it's not for you. What Rabbeinu says over there, the, the, the mevucha, this, this, this confoundment we have about the idea in the Bechira, this paradox of Do you know, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows what you're going to do, how can you possibly choose what to do? And if you choose what to do, if you have the choice to do whatever you want, how can HaKadosh Baruch Hu know about it? They're mutually exclusive. The ingenious and true Teres that Rabbeinu brings here in this Torah, he's already giving you the Teres. You know, there were many, the Rambam amongst them, that, that explained this, how you can, you know, this incongruity, this, this, this paradox of the idea and the Bechira. So the, even the Rambam, he says, he explains, 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 until he gets to a certain point that he gets to, my thoughts, my thought process are not the same level of yours. So, you know, there's a derive that says, you know, why did you start the whole thing? But the rabbi, why did you start the whole thing? It's a derech of a to start, you know, you don't know how you're going to end. What's the, uh, what Rabbeinu says over here, Rabbeinu says over here, he says that there has to be a kasha. The terrors on this kasha is that it has to remain a kasha. 
Because the minute that you will understand that seichel, that secret of the, con the congruity between the idea and the Bechira, you won't have choice anymore. When you understand this, that's it, choice is gone. When you understand this, you're no longer a human being, you're a malach. So the Tez Rabbeinu is giving here is, it's not that he explains to you what that secret is, what that seichel is. We don't have the kalim to, to contain it because we're people. But he's telling us that the kasha has to exist. It is through that kasha that we have Bechira. And it is through the Bechira that we are going and bumbling, stumbling into whatever it is that we are facing on a day-to-day -day basis and still holding us, you know, holding on, looking towards the Kaddish Baruch Hu, looking to get the Ora Makif to get it in, to give the to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. This is what this is all about. The turrets on the Kasha, the turrets on this, 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 on, on the, the uh, paradox is that it has to be a question. There has to remove a question. I, 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 the question has to remain. We'll say it again. Rebbeinu says over here that the the, there are certain confoundments, you know, Pinas Makifin, that we can't get them into our Seichel because they're too big for our Seichel. This is specifically some confine, confoundments that we can actually, you know, put it alike, we cannot figure out, like freedom of choice and prescience, because Rochel knows everything before you do it. And Arena brings that this is, he gives a terrace to that particular kasha, but it's not the terrace in which he makes the two terms, you know, fit one and are congruent with, with one another. Abino says that there has to be a kasha, there has to remain a kasha. These things cannot fit together because this is how we are able to get to do the, in the Sechel Pchinas Ochor, the avoid that we do with our eyes, with our nose, with our ears, with our eyes, with, with our mouth, with every, the mouth of course is above everything else. Through the Sechel Pchinas Ochor, we can get the Pchinas Ken. This is only possible if there's Bechira, this free choice. Free choice can only exist as long as you don't, you cannot, you know, you know, finish up the paradox between, explain the paradox uh, uh, between them. So in this, the Rebbe gives the exact terrors for the Kasha, but not taking away the Bechira from you. This is what this is about. The second thing we take away from this is that the largest and, and, and the most, the, the lowest of, of all the Shema Sinas is the mouth. As we learn from, from Am Yisrael, Yaakov Avinu and Am Yisrael, after the, the Stakos of, of, of Arna Koin, when Amalek came to them, you know, with, with, with camouflage, you know, they spoke Knanite, and they dressed as, as Ardites, and they're really Amalekites. And the only reason they did that is in order to throw Amisrael off the sense that they wouldn't know what to daven for. So what we learn from this is that when you are speaking to a Kodesh Baruch you have to be very precise about what it is that you want, what it is that you need. You know, you can come to Kaddish Baruch Hu and you feel, you know, I need this or I need that, but 
why am I really asking for this? Why am I asking for health? Why am I asking for money? I'm asking for this. Am I asking just because I want things to be easier for me? Isn't ultimately it's all about me, 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 me here? I mean, shouldn't I just be asking them, you know, for for learning Torah and Yosem and Of course you have to. But what about health? What about money? What about social bias? What about, you know, feeling good? You know, I'm doing this for myself. Am I supposed to be just, you know, is really, isn't this takenism? I'm supposed to be giving over. The answer is that Kodesh Baruch Hu wants to give it to you. Kodesh Baruch Hu wants to give you everything. He wants to give you all the money that you need. He wants you to feel wonderful. He wants you to have the greatest relationship you possibly can with your wife and with your kids and with everybody else. The, the reason why asking for all these things is not takenism, unless, of course, it's the only thing you do, is, is not takenism, is because the lack is from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. The lack is a Kodesh Baruch Hu, so you can go out to him and ask him. So you should know that everything comes from him. Bevakasha, go ahead, tell the Kodesh Baruch Hu, start out, this is, the boy Shalom, listen, I'm going to be asking about myself. You know, I have these headaches, which makes it difficult for me, or I have this, or I have that, and I go have money, and I have that. Whatever it is that you have. He says, I know I'm going to talk about me, you know, but what can I do? You know, I live in your world. You are the one who gave me these lacks, so I should dive in for them. And then be very, very specific what it is that you need. Like this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Amisro did something extraordinary. He says, that particular, that particular. Because they couldn't know who are they. He spoke one language. They wore other, you know, clothes of, of, of a different nation. And they were really, a, some of the, that's the trickery of a Moloch. You know, to throw a substitute, a smoke screen. So the word not to dumb. It comes to show you how important it is that you dub for the right thing, that you actually mention everything, that you actually very you are actually very explicit in everything that you say. The main thing is to plow ahead. Just plow ahead. You know, we have Parshas Mishpatim. Parsha Mishpatim starts with Kisikna Evid Ivri. If you were going to buy a Jewish slave, and now I'm asking you, I mean, don't we have any greater concerns when it comes to the judicial system as Jewish slave? Wouldn't uh, you know the 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 precision of the ways, you know, the, the, the business should be uh, uh, done. Uh, all the other mitzvahs, why Dafka slave? What is, what's, what is, slave, Alma Ivrio, what is this? The answer is that from all the seven candles that Rabbeinu mentions here, there's a, there's a, a, the light comes out of the eyes, light and obviously into the eyes. Air goes into the nose and goes out of the nose. You know, food goes into the mouth and speech comes out of the mouth. Really, food does not come out of the mouth. But nevertheless, you know, words come out of the mouth. The only, the only uh, organs in the head that the, the, the direction is only unidirectional are the ears. The ears don't omit anything. Only sound comes in, that's it. This is represented by the slave. A slave has no mouth. Why? Because a slave is beetle. It's not beetle to his, to his master. A minute before you can choose whatever you want. 
a minute later, what do you, that's it, you're a slave. You have no say. When we say that, 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 Yismach Moshe bematnas chelkoi, ki eved neeman koras aloi. Yismach Moshe bematnas chelkoi. What is the biggest sin of Moshe Rabbeinu? That he is bottled to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. He's totally bottled to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. He's an Eved, he's a slave to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Giving over everything I have to Hashem, this is the ears. That's why the, 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 the halacha is if chas v'chalila you cause a person to lose an eye, then you pay him as much as an eye is worth. How, how much is an eye worth? Again, the cheshman is you estimate how much he can be sold as a slave. Again, you know, with full eyesight and how much can be sold without the eyesight. And that difference is how much you pay him. Those are the damages. Again, it, everything is measured in this in of slavery, in of beetle. Halacha is that if you cause a person to lose his hearing, you pay everything that that person is worth. Why? You took away from him his ability to beetle. Mevatel himself to what? Mevatel to 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 the to the the, the, the makifin, to the and the you know, we're talking about you know shem yud kevavke yishem avayi baruchu is the bechina of zerampin. It's not the bechina of atika, but for us, who are in bechinas adni, it's 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 makifin. It's a makif which is beyond us. For us, it's bechinas atika because we don't know it. This this cherished thing of slavery, Moshe Rabbein calls him a slave. Dovi, Dovi, Davdecho. David, your slave. What do you mean? David is David is a melech. What do you mean? David is because an Evid, an Evid, the Kedusha, means Bitul. I don't exist. Everything is for you. I don't want anything for myself. Akadish Bahu brought us here to this world. We have to start from the Ochar until you get to that Bechina of, of, of everything is for you. Ask for yourself, Bevadai. The world is filled with people, they don't even know to speak the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Yeah, when things become Shemirachem, you know, very, very bad. So they say, till them, they say this, they say, but what, what happened until then? Where were you until then? What about your business? What about your health? What about your relationships? Where was it feel until then? All the tikkunim start with the mouth. All the kilkulim start from the eyes. So you merely you understand that you have to beg a Baruch Hu to guard your eyes, to have your shemai, and to have shlima saudnim, a real amuna, real amuna. In the Kodesh Baruch Hu, and really Muna in Tzadikim. Because the more commensurately with the kind of a Muna that you have in Tzadikim, this is how much beetle you have. How much beetle you have is how much you can actually get and, and lock in and bring the Makifan in. And that's what Rabbeinu says that himself. He says, when the, the Makifan is Pchinas Ibor, it is unknowable. He says, there's a makifin of Torah, there's a makifin of tefillah. You just don't get it. No, I mean, so you can't learn. What can you do? To daven, you can't daven. You can't, you, you, you can't put yourself together. You, you, the whole inning is done with the mouth. I mean, it says, cry out. It's a oka. Talk to Kodesh Baruch Hu. Scream, call to Kodesh Baruch Hu. That will bring a prinus later. Bezat Hashem, you know, you know, with your permission, we will stop here. But uh, we will meet again in Motzah Shabbos, in Motzah Shem, in Sichas Aran, and obviously. Uh,
uh, this will be, this particular share will be continued on next Thursday in the 